Hi everyone, my name is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and in this video I want to show you three great ways to sharpen your astrophotography images using Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so here's our image of the Pillars of Creation. It's a great image, it was captured rather sharp, the images are in focus, but there's a lot we can do to actually really sharpen it up even more. So I've got a few copies of the image in the layers panel that you can see over here. I'm actually gonna, just gonna make one more just to be safe because there's a few things we're gonna be doing with those layers to kind of hide and reveal the sharper areas from beneath some masking that we're gonna do. So that's the main thing you need to remember when sharpening an astro photo. You wanna do selective sharpening. You don't wanna globally sharpen the entire image. So you need to get good at creating masks to really sharpen an image properly. And uh, that applies to a lot of elements to astrophotography. Masking is so important. So before I get into the three sharpening methods, I just wanna show you a quick way to mask the edges of your image. So Photoshop actually has this really cool tool in the filters drop-down menu called Find Edges. And you'll find that under Filter, Stylize, Find Edges. And it, you can already tell it has done a pretty decent job at finding the edges of this image and that's what we want to sharpen. So I prefer to see it in reverse so I'm just going to press Control i to invert the image and then I'll just desaturate it as well because I don't need those wacky colors. We're just creating a mask here. So from here we can go into one of my favorite tools, select color range. We're just going to select the highlights and then refine that mask using the Select and Mask tool. Now I've done tutorials on the Select and Mask tool before. One of my favorite features of Photoshop. But essentially we can create whatever mask we want based off that rough selection using these tools here. And we're just trying to get a decent mask of the edges of the image here. So this mask isn't so nice to look at, but we can just turn this layer off because now we can see how those marching ants are surrounding our areas of the image that we want to sharpen. And that's a really powerful thing. But before we do that, we just want to click this create mask button. So we have this layer here and you can name it if you want. Uh, we'll just call it edge mask. Now we can turn that off and kind of forget about it for now. Now we get into the fun part, which is the sharpening. So let me just create another layer. And on this one, we're gonna do our first sharpening technique, and it's one that's called Smart Sharpen. This is built into Photoshop, and it does a really great job. So under the Filter drop-down menu, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. So it's got a Reduce Noise slider, and the radius and the amount. So why don't we just do a rather aggressive 169% here because we're going to be masking it off later anyway. So if we want to see the before and after of that filter, it's actually done a really good job. And if you ask me, this is an improved image overall. Uh, the only problem is that it's actually sharpened up some of those stars, which isn't a great look. But we have that mask at our disposal here. So what we can do is actually hold down control on the, the mask turn it off and now if you look at it we've only selected those sharp areas of the image that we want to play with now we're on the sharp layer right now if we turn that off to the beforehand this is the unsharp layer so what we want to do is just remove these areas of the soft layer and reveal the sharp layer underneath so to do that you would just pull the soft layer on top so now it's on top and now our sharp layer is underneath and we could just simply press the delete key to clear those areas. So this is better than what the original Smart Sharpen did because now it's selective. Look at this crazy layer here. Uh, we've got the sharp layer underneath of just the edges. So this as it stands alone, this technique is so powerful. A lot of my images uh, use this technique to, to achieve the results that I have. So that way works pretty good. And before I get into the next sharpening mode, I want to show you just a probably a smarter way to go about that action rather than just clicking that delete key and kind of removing everything. Uh, so let's just go back in the history state here before we cleared it. And I think a lot of you will know, will know where I'm going with this. So with this mask in place, with our sharp layer underneath, we can just use the eraser brush and just very selectively, intentionally sharpen the areas that we really wanna sharpen. And man, this is gonna be satisfying. I really wanna sharpen up the pillars of creation here and the surrounding dust. So I'm just clicking with the eraser brush set to at 21%, so multiple clicks before it actually starts revealing it. 
and then you can really just selectively sharpen the Bach globules or anything, any of the areas you want to sharpen and you know you're not removing any of these other areas that because our mask is a little rocky, we're not sharpening up those areas, just where we want to only. And if we just turn this uh, marching ants off, you can see now we've really selectively sharpened the image and that's a really powerful thing. Let's move on to the next sharpening method. Okay, so we've got our mask there, we're ready to go. We can sharpen any way we want. We know that we can just select the portions of the image we wanna sharpen only. This one we're gonna use one of my favorite ways to sharpen, and it's just the Adobe Camera Raw Filter Sharpen method. Now, Adobe Camera Raw recently updated to the, what are we at, 12.3, and they kinda of changed the interface, but I really like it. So in the drop-down menus here, there's a tab called Detail, and there's this sharpening tab and let's just get in a little deeper to 100 percent we'll just move this sharpening slider up and then with this detail tab you can actually adjust the the balance between noise reduction and sharpening because the two kind of work hand in hand so you'll want to spend some time really getting this right and again we're applying this globally to the image but we're going to use our mask we created to uh to really get it refined so why don't we just use this setting here and you know the level of sharpness is really up to you so we've got that sharp and if we turn it off and on you can see this is more of a smoother subtle sharp it almost i don't know this this creates kind of a plasticky look especially if you've moved that noise reduction slider up so again we could use our edge mask control click and get a soft layer on top and reveal the layer underneath. And here's kind of what we're looking at. So again, a pr an improvement over the original, but uh, to get that one right, you're really gonna find a nice balance. The next tool does an auto mode where it decides using AI technology, which is so crazy, what's the best settings to apply based on what others have been doing over all these iterations and iterations. So if you haven't heard of it, it's the Topaz Labs Denoise AI. Yes, it's a made for noise reduction, but there's also a sharpen slider in there. So we'll do that one next. Now I should mention right out of the gate that the Topaz Labs actually has a sharpen AI tool, which is probably a better fit for this job, but I'm just using the Denoise. I know a lot of you have that plugin already. Now on this one, I'm just gonna go straight into the filter dropdown menu and go to Topaz Labs Denoise AI. And let's see what this thing can do on its own generating a preview and this is why I love this tool so literally the default settings if you can see the difference look as I scroll and wipe over the pillars of creation this to me is an amazing result right out of the box I haven't adjusted these sliders why don't I just move up the sharpen but I feel like it's going to make it worse uh, not so bad. So we've sharpened it and then now we're going to just use our mask. Again, like that other tool built into Photoshop, there's a remove noise slider. And depending on your image, you might want to adjust that more or less. Uh, the color noise reduction is good, especially if you're using a DSLR camera. So I'll just apply this kind of as is. I moved the sharpen up a little bit. But here's the before and after of the out of the box Denoise AI, which is a tool meant for noise reduction, but there's also a sharpening slider in there. So again, we'll go to our mask, select our area and put a soft layer on top just to make sure. And now I'll use that manual method of just removing it away from the areas I really care about that I really want to be sharp. So I hope that this video was an eye opener for you. Um, if you haven't done selective sharpening before, uh, you're probably giddy to get to your images and apply this technique. Now I will say that you really need to be careful. Don't go overboard with really dramatically sharpening up one area from the other, because if you go too far and that balance isn't right or the transition area between the sharp and the soft, it's just not gonna look right and it's just really not gonna be a very pleasing image. But if you really play with it and master it, you can make some masterpieces and I think it's gonna make a huge difference for your astrophotography. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. This was just a portion of a full image processing guide that I offer. The link's in the description if you wanna support me in Astro Backyard and learn more about the way I process my astrophotography images. 
Until next time, clear skies.